Pete Carroll took a shot at Russell Wilson. He never wanted to wear a wristband. It hurt our offense. Russell Wilson fired back. We won a lot of games without a wristband. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett, the Denver coach, uh, came out and said, actually, Russell now is going to wear a wristband when we face Tennessee this weekend, and he explained it. Sometimes you want to get a little creative, and those things can get a little bit verbose. So you don't, uh, you want to have it so it's easier instead of having to call it and then communicate it. There's a whole process. I think it also helps with crowd noise. If you have crowd noise going from him listening to me, he just has to hear one wristband number, and then he can go in there and communicate it to the guys properly. So why wouldn't a quarterback wear a wristband? Burrow does, Brady does, Mahomes does, Rogers does. It would be like doing a radio show without having a handful of notes. Right. It's it's there's a reason they created calculators. So you don't have to memorize all math equations or be, you know, Einstein, go to a calculator. Um, Wristbands speed things up. Basically, the O.C. can yell in your ear, B12. Oh, okay, And then you can go to the huddle instead of him having to elaborate what play you want, what motions you want. Just makes sense. It speeds everything up. Um, Here's what worries me about Russell Wilson, who I've been a defender of, is that. Did he not wear it in Seattle due to image that he wanted to prove he was smart enough that he didn't need it? I don't need it. Um, and the reason I worry about that, because we've had four or five from Pete Carroll to several players say things about Russell now that he's gone about image. Uh, he was too concerned about it. And when four or five people criticize you all on the you know, the kind of the same thing, a coach here, a defensive back here, a receiver there, a running back there, and they're all saying, an ex-teammate, they're all saying the same thing drives them nuts. Well, there's, there's, there's probably some validity to it. And so now Russell's in a bit of a crisis, not a bit, a real crisis, Denver is, and so he's going to the wristband, which I think is the right move. But, you know, why wouldn't you wear it? I've got these players, coaches saying he was really into image. Everybody in the league that's great uses one. You don't. Ryan Rossello was on yesterday, and we kind of talked about the whole, uh, you know, Russell Wilson situation. I think this is a collection of that it got really tough to deal with. And Russell Wilson, the same as like Aaron Rodgers, when they complained about their their. Their plight. I'm like, man, you you need to be on a worse team for me to have more sympathy for you. You know, look, it's cool to be driven, man. And Russell Wilson's an incredibly driven guy. He's incredibly successful. He's, he, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't believe he's going to continue to be this bad as he's been in Denver, Colin. But like his movement out of there was about making it more about himself. And if you're his coach and you're his teammate, and you're like, you know, for the most part, this all kind of worked. But because you're not winning MVPs or you're not chasing Brady, like we're the problem. Yeah, it's interesting. I like the fact Russell's now pivoting to a wristband. Use a calculator. They work. There's a reason they were created. J-Mac with a this to be true. Sometimes it used to be quarterbacks got drafted by a team and they felt like they stayed at a team for a long time. But in the last three years alone, you got Matt Stafford changing teams and Russell Wilson changing teams and Jared Goff and Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield. Quarterbacks move all the time. And uh, I, I saw this story. We touched on that earlier this week about the mobility of quarterbacks and Derek Carr. So Devontae Adams, who is as good as any receiver in this league, came out. This is real, folks. He said, at the end of the day, if we're just going to concede and say, oh, they double teamed me, it's forcing the ball to somebody else. Well, I, I got no business being here in Vegas in this building because that's what teams are going to do. So if you think the only way to get the ball to me is when I'm singled up, I, I'm going to have four catches on the year. He went on to say, I don't put anything on the coaches. Gulp. Derek Carr. Remember we thought this was an interesting comment earlier this week on the troubles with the Raiders and the star quarterback said this? There's a lot I want to say, you know. Um, but if I'm honest, I don't need to say it here, you know. Um, you know, and there's things that, that will be said. You know, I, I feel like I've, uh, you know, been in this situation a lot where, um, you know, new 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 coaches or this or that, and you have to you have to teach the new guys like this is how we do it, and this is the mentality, and this is, and and that gets uh, tiring, uh, but at the same time, it's my job. So, um, you know, there's there's some of that. So I'll say I'll say that right now. 
I think Derek Carr plays for somebody else next year. Here's why. First reason is Derek Carr is very good. I've defended him for years. Devontae Adams is the elite, top two or three in the league. Teams tend to keep elite over very good. A uh, second reason is Derek's reputation through the years is he kind of plays it safe. And that's what Devontae Adams is saying. He's playing it safe. That's not good in 2022 NFL. Third reason is this current Raiders coach and this current Raiders GM, they didn't draft Derek Carr. They inherited him. And finally, number four is Derek's dead cap hit next year is tiny. In fact, if the Raiders move off him by June 1st, the Raiders save $30 million. Derek Carr is not going to be a Raider next year. This coach, this GM, they inherited him. And they're losing. So you got to find scapegoats, right, to keep your job. Um, this is a Derek Carr is on the market. Now, Derek Carr loves being a Raider quarterback. But he has been overcoming. He has been, as I've said many times, the life preserver of a sinking ship many times. I think this is his sixth head coach in nine years. It's a mess. It's one of the poor ownership groups. His franchise moved. I mean, it's been really, really hard. Uh, the g- coach and the GM, uh, you know, Gruden and Mike Mayock, that was a mess. Multiple first-round busts. Guys not even on the team anymore that were drafted just a couple of years ago in the first round. So Derek Carr, I believe, could upgrade. But I think the Raiders probably think we could upgrade too. So if you think this is crazy... Do not forget, in the last three years, the number of quarterbacks who have changed teams, Goff and Baker and Stafford and Wentz and Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. We thought Marcus Mariota was done. Now he's starting again. So I think this means Derek Carr's future with the Raiders uh, is probably short term. It is not the end of the world. He can go to a franchise with more stability, but the Raiders will not get punished. Moving off him. His, his cap hit, that dead cap hit is tiny. All right, the second thing. So, like a lot of you, I grew up loving sports. And, you know, I used to kind of keep track of records. And, you know, I'd collect baseball cards and try to memorize sports records. Then Google came around and there's really no point to it. Just look it up. I, I don't have enough space in my brain to memorize sports now. But um, one of those records that I've, I've never been into... Like I always told you, Cal Ripken's uh, duration streak. My thing is take a day off, get healthy, let young guys play. I was never really into it. The other one I've never been into at all in football is longest streak of passes without an interception. You're playing it safe. So I saw this this morning. Tom Brady, the GOAT, closing in on Aaron Rodgers' record for consecutive passes without an interception. Yes, and this is the dullest and least dynamic offense Brady's ever had. And yet he's on course to break that record. This offense is 25th in scoring. It's below the Jets and Zach Wilson. It's below the Panthers. It's below the Bears with kid quarterbacks. And that's the record I always think gets into Aaron Rodgers' head. Is that I think, I mean, Peyton Manning's top 10 all time in interceptions. Who cares? Brady and Manning were about winning. I think sometimes Aaron Rodgers is concerned how it looks. I've never bought into this. The number one draw in the NBA, the number one television draw, is no longer LeBron James. He's the old guy. He's hurt too often. He's missed 27, 28% of Laker games. He can't play. It's Steph Curry. Is it because he's dominating physically? No. Because he's blocking shots and flying above the rim. I know. No, that's not it either. It's because he plays fast and loose and it's fun and he takes big swings and he turns it over and he misses a lot of shots, but he controls the tempo. He keeps the game going. He's flying on the border of reckless, but not reckless. People like that. They like big swings. Aaron Judge strikes out a lot. People like big swings and risk takers. I've never understood this. In 2022, Athletes are getting better. Receivers are getting bigger. They're getting taller. They're getting faster. Throw the ball down the field. Last year, there was a great stat on Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow was an interception machine last year. Tons of picks. 
but he threw the ball down the field and took big, big swings. People love Burrow. Increasingly in years, I've seen Aaron Rodgers. I saw it last year in the playoffs. I'm like, Aaron, stop playing it safe. I'm seeing it this year. Develop the young receivers. Let it go. The one game this year that I really thought in the last month that I like what Aaron did was that Buffalo game. And he was letting it go downfield. I think he was three for three on a couple of big. 